Hey guys, it's Jim Halterman from TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider. I'm here with the fabulous Harvey Guillen from What We Do in the Shadows on FX. Harvey, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks, Jim. How are you? I'm doing great. I rewatched the finale and it was such a tour de force. I'm going to call it tour de force. How did it feel filming it? Um, were you exhausted? Was it, were you like a kid in a candy store? What, tell me the, just shooting that finale episode. Well, you know what's so funny? I didn't know that we were going to be doing that stunt stuff uh, early on in the season. So when I got, you know, they gave me a trainer and I went to the gym like three or four times a week. And I, I mean, I'm telling you, Jim, I lost like 20 pounds. I go to the gym because I don't go to the gym that often. But I did it. And I was like, the animal's going to be, you know, has to be like stamina and like fighting. And then for the finale, um, as luck would have it, it was towards the end of the shooting schedule, which is closer to the holidays. And I got the most ill. I was I at 104 fever. Oh, during no. the filming of that scene. And I remember that I had, I knew I had never been that sick in my life. Like even like Kyle, the director's like, you okay, man? And I was like, I don't feel good. And he's like, okay, buddy, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And then Kayvon would walk by me and I'm sitting in my chair and I wouldn't talk to anyone. I was just looking down and like, focus, focus, focus. Cause I was just like my energy. I knew that just needed wow. to be safe for this sequence of like fighting. And I didn't want to jeopardize the, you know, the visual of the scene. And I just remember thinking, I have to get through this and I have to get through it really well. And so what I did is just get into that mentality of Guillermo was like, that's, he's not sick. You know, I was like, I'm sick. Guillermo's not sick. And so I just like kicked ass and did it. And to our stunt crew was like, man, you were really in it. Like that, that looked really good. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> did you get the take? I want to go home. Yeah. And we did like several takes, you know, we did like probably yeah. like, four takes of it because the camera has to move and stuff and and my stunt is all one like it's not like we've cut in like in pieces it's a one time like he, he swings in cuts off the head cut, fight 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 goes downstairs so it's like I'm like okay we'll do this one part and then stop it's like it was a continuous scene and so we had to do it over and over and when I tell you I went home and slept for 12 hours and woke up and didn't know how I got there uh, was the moment that I realized I think I gave it I gave it my all, <laughs> I I it all I so what was it like the start of the season when the producers kind of told you what Guillermo's journey would be? Because it really was a great revelation for the character, for the viewers, and I'm guessing for you as well. Well, that's funny. You, um, well, I they didn't tell me. <laughs> they didn't tell me. Um, they're very good about keeping the storylines under wraps. And uh, Paul and Stephanie, like, you know, we also shoot out of order. So sometimes you'll shoot like episode 201 and then 204 back to back. And so you don't know what happened in 202 and 203. So at, in 204, Guillermo's driving a car and you're like, where did he get a car? And he's like, it's fine, don't worry about it. And it's like, well, how, why does it have blood on it? And it's like, you know what, don't worry about it. And it's like, okay. But um, for me personally, like I always love to know where my character is going. But, you know, I just was just like on my toes all the time. I didn't know that that was going to be the finale until the finale. Like I literally didn't know that that was the climax of the season. Uh, until we're at the table read, which was how traditionally it's been happening. Like I go to the table read, I read the script, and then it's like, whoa, he's going to kill vampires this season? It's like, yes, let's talk about that. And that's when you get the conversation of like, here's what we're going to do, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, what they did include me was, you know, um, for the finale, when we had the scenes with my mom and, and the household, um, it was very important to me to keep authentic and with, you know, Guillermo's uh, Mexican culture, to be as authentic as possible and then the way that they talk to each other where people picked up on that online like they said oh my god i can't believe you called your mom ama which is the way you actually do it if you're mexican you don't say mama you usually say ama or apa which is a, a term of endearment for your mom you know mm -hmm. and it was just funny that people caught it like they were like i can't believe you said that i can't believe you actually said like that's that's i feel seen i feel represented and i was like that was why like, it was important to like you know, have a talk. And then Paul and Stephanie were like, okay, what would she be doing in the kitchen? What kind of dishes or what the, like the conversation is important. Um, and for me, it was like, you know, the smallest thing like that she was going to be making buñuelos, you know, cause I was home on the weekend or something. And they were like, yeah, that sounds great. And so we have an amazing team on set. And so, but they looked up buñuelos, but there's different kinds of buñuelos. There's Mexican buñuelos, there's Salvadoranian buñuelos. And so they made the wrong type of buñuelos. And I was like, what are these? And I'm like the buñuelos. And I was like, oh no, these aren't Mexican buñuelos. These are Salvadoranian. And I was like, his mom wouldn't know how to make these usually. Like, it's like, she's Mexican. And I was like, I'll make them. So I made the buñuelos before that. <laughs> I, got, like, the I like put, like I got sugar and like, you know, cinnamon. 
and we made them. And if, if anything, you barely saw it in the scene. It was so quick in the bottom of like a table of buñuelo. But for me, it was so important to know that those buñuelos <laughs> were Mexican behind me. That was so important. Oh my God. I love that so much. Um, and what did you hear online from people when Gear? I mean, I've seen some of the tweets, but Guillermo, when he kicked ass and just killed that whole theater for the most part, um, yeah. what was the reaction though? Because it wasn't just funny. It was also so empowering for the character. And I'm guessing people picked up on that. Yeah, it was so um, nice. You know, I've been posting, I've been getting nonstop like messages from people who um, see themselves on screen for the first time. You know, someone who looks different, who's not the traditional 6'2", you know, Adonis type. Um, someone who looks different, who looks just uh, like an average person on, you know, on, on the screen kicking butt. It's so encouraging and inspiring. And people are like, whoa, you can really move, you know, for you're a big guy, but you really, you know what? You inspired me. Like some people were like, you really inspired me watching you being a Latinx character, you know, a uh, person and being this character who's also Latinx on screen and kicking butt and being a good hearted person, but also having a moral compass, but also struggling with everyday situations and having human, you know, uh, emotions run through him. People were really just resonating with that with Guillermo. And it really warms my heart just because I feel like at the end of the day, we're all a little bit of Guillermo at some point in our lives. We've all been there at one point or another where we've had a bad day, where we're working at a job we don't love, or we're in a relationship that the person doesn't appreciate us as much. We've all been Guillermo. So a vote for Guillermo is really a vote for all of us. (laughs) Now I feel like going into season three and thankfully we know there is a season three. um, What would your hope be for Guillermo? Because I feel like, the cat's out of the bag. People know he's been up to some things, but I'm curious if power will shift at all or will it go back to the way it was before? What would your at least hopes be since I know it's a little early to talk about that? I mean, you know, you're right. Like we, we left season one in a great cliffhanger and season two, it's even more of a doozy. Um, I don't know what they're writing for him, but I know that I have my like idea of and personal thing, you know, wants or desires and wish for Guillermo. And I just really want him to, dive in more into how, you know, he didn't know about his past, you know, lineage. So really kind of dive into that and and know what makes you and what's your family tree and the core of that and how those worlds came, came to be, you know, from the Mexican side, from the Van Helsies, like all of this together must be such a cool, you know, uh, trajectory to get to where we are with this Guillermo um, character. So I would love to know more about that, maybe introduce some sort of a, uh, you know, distraction love interest for him would be nice. Um, just because we can never tell if he's in love with his master or not, but like some sort of love interest would be like just a hint of it would be a nice, you know, touch to introduce to the season. But who knows? I mean, the sky's the limit. Like with our writers, we have, we have an amazing team, but those would be my thoughts or ideas of uh, Guillermo. <laughs> I love it so much. Well, congratulations on a really wonderful season. And I can't wait to talk to you about season three when we get to. Oh, no. Thanks so much. Thanks, Harvey. Thanks, Harvey.